And now to the campaign. Slowly, slowly, drip by drip, more Democrats uh, seem to be getting cold feet over President Biden's re-election campaign after that disastrous debate performance. Uh, that performance has some wondering if he should even stay in the race, if he's capable of doing the job as questions grow over whether he's too old to serve. Democratic Senator Pete Welch of Vermont criticized the Biden team in an interview with Semaphore. He said uh, campaign officials have had a dismissive attitude towards people who are raising those questions to them directly. Uh, Elizabeth Schulze joins me now from the White House, and political director Rick Klein is here in the studio. Uh, Elizabeth, some Democrats in Congress are now getting more vocal with their concerns with the president. Lloyd Doggett of Texas coming out. What are we hearing? Yeah, that's right, Terry. And this is the first sitting member of Congress to publicly call on President Biden to step aside from the nomination. We just got this statement from Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett. He says, President Biden's first commitment has always been to our country, not himself. We'll give the lawnmower going by there, Terry. He says, I am hopeful he will make the painful and difficult decision to withdraw. I respectfully call on him to do so. So a lot of those concerns that we had heard privately from Democrats in the wake of the debate are now being voiced more publicly. We are also told from sources that Democratic governors held a call among themselves on Monday. They discussed President Biden's debate performance. Some of them also were frustrated by the lack of outreach from the White House, we are told. And we are also told that the president is expected to hold a call with those Democratic governors. Again, he would be on the call tomorrow, Terry. All right, Elizabeth, thanks. Rick, our political director, this, this is not a good look, right? He hasn't even called governors. Uh, our Rachel Scott says he hasn't reached out to people on the Hill personally. Uh, and he's, he's not given a major interview. These are kind of standard procedures for, you know, for candidates who stumble like this. Is it because he can't anymore? Well, what's happening? Well, I think his activities since the debate have actually fueled the concerns. He did that rally in North Carolina the day after. It seemed better. It seemed like he was, he, was, he was very much with it. He did the speech last night, but that's a teleprompter speech at the White House. He had all day to prepare. He hasn't yet had a public performance that puts to rest the questions that are swirling. And by not cutting in some of the Democratic governors and members of Congress, he's fueling a perception that there's, he's closed off from a lot of the feedback. That's the concern we've been hearing. I, it's going to be a big topic that the White House has asked about today. Is, is the president going to get out there more to actually listen to these concerns? Because as of now, there's a lot of frustration out there, not just about the performance last Thursday, but about the, the, the lack of engagement over what it means and whether it speaks to a larger issue that has to be addressed. Yeah, presidents can get isolated in the White House, right? They can depend on that inner circle. They, they feel perhaps they can't trust people, especially at his age. He's, he's, he needs support, as, yeah. we all, as every president does, but he in particular, perhaps. Is that what's happening here? It's just too tight an inner Inner circle and they aren't handling it right? Well, it's certainly a tight inner circle. And a lot of the frustration that we've heard aimed at those aides and the, the people that are very close to him, they did, did, did too much to prep him in debate or not enough. All of that, I think, is about the fact that it is a very close and tight knit group of people. His family members and his very close aides, many of which he's worked with for, for 40 years, are the ones that are protecting the president for better or for worse. And members of Congress, even longtime allies, former, sen former senators that he's that he served with for a long time, members of the House, governors, they feel like they are not able to penetrate that inner core to voice their concerns. And it is extraordinary now to have this first Democratic member of Congress go as far as Lloyd Doggett did. It's bad. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not good. So, Elizabeth, the president speaking about climate change in Washington. One, one of the strategies is change the subject to things that you think you're strong on. Mm. So how important is it for him to be seen uh, working, talking to people, you know, walking, talking, all of that? Yeah, clearly, Terry, the president trying to show that he's up to the task. He's delivering remarks today about extreme weather, trying to propose some of the steps his administration is taking to help Americans dealing with extreme heat. But at the end of the day, as much as the focus the White House would want to be on the substance of that, it's also about how is he going to present those remarks? What's he going to look like? How does he sound? As Rick pointed out in the president's first remarks back at the White House here after he was at Camp David over the weekend, he read straight from the teleprompter. It was four minutes. He did not answer our shouted questions. And so if this is another speech where he's looking at prepared remarks from delivery, he does not go off the cuff, which is what's something that a lot of his advisors, including top Democratic allies like Senator Chris Coons, are urging him to do. That's really what he needs to show that he's up to right now, taking those off the cuff questions and being able to be unscripted like in those moments during the debate. You know, it's hard, as they say in sports, father time is undefeated. Elizabeth Schulze, Rick Klein, thanks very much. Thanks.